So we have two examples now where we're going to be calculating work using vectors in the doc product. Now, this is one I actually stole from the textbook. It's a 10 pound force is acting in the direction of 1, 2. And the movement of the object is along 3, 0. What is the total amount of work done? So one of the confusing things about this is the force is actually acting in this direction, 1, 2. That is the vector 1, 2. The problem is that the magnitude of that, if you figure it out, is the square root of 1 squared plus 2 squared, which is the square root of 5. So the issue here is if it is actually a 10 pound force, that vector is not long enough. And so the first thing we're going to do is make the square root of, or sorry, the vector 1, 2. We're going to change that into a vector that's pointing in the same direction, but is actually 10 long. And then the second thing we're going to do is actually find the work. Okay. So I, this is just something you have to realize. Sometimes the vector is just pointing the direction, but it's not telling you the actual magnitude. So you got to adjust it. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to turn it into a unit vector and then multiply by 10. If we turn it into a unit vector, it gets, its size will be one and then multiply by 10. That way it will be a vector 10 wide. All right, so to do the unit vector, we figure out the magnitude of one, two which we already did this, but it would be one squared plus five squared. And that would be the square root of, sorry, I was thinking already about five. It would be one squared plus two squared, which is the square root of five. Okay, so my unit vector is one over root five and two over root five. Okay. And I'm not going to be changing this into um, radicalizing because, because it's an application problem. I'm going to have a decimal answer in the end. So this we're going to multiply by 10. So my actual force vector is when we take the unit vector and times it by 10 so that it is actually the proper length. So this is 10 over root 5, 20 all over root 5. And there we go. If we checked, that would have a magnitude of 10. All right, so what I'm working for here is because they gave us two vectors, I'm gonna use the dot product definition of work. So I'm gonna do force dotted with my, my movement vector. All right, my force is 10 over root five, 20 over root five, and I'm going to dot that with my movement, which is, in this case, three, zero. So we have this weird situation where the object is moving three forward, but the force is not moving directly with the movement. The force is pushing kind of at an angle. So some of the force is gonna be lost when we're calculating work. All right, so 10 times this, that will be 30 over root five, and this times this will be zero. So in this case, um, the y part doesn't add anything to the work. The answer is going to be 30 divided by root five, or if you rationalize it, 30 root five over five. Um, no matter what you simplify it to, 30 divided by root five is going to be 13.4. Okay, and I looked it up, the units here, if you are doing um, pounds in feet. This is called a foot pound. Very creative unit. Okay, so this is another example of work, but we're going to end up using the other formula. Before we used the dot product of force and movement, this is going to be the magnitude of our force the magnitude of our direction, cosine of theta. The reason I know this is because already um, the object is traveling eight feet. To me, that is the, the actual magnitude of the traveling. And then we have the movement 20 degrees off of the force. And so we have our theta. 
All right, so the work here is going to be the magnitude of the force, which I don't know yet, but the magnitude of x is 8, and then the angle is 20. So the only thing left in this whole equation here is that we have a force vector, and we need to know the magnitude to use this other formula. So the magnitude of the force vector is going to be the square root of 5 squared plus 10 squared, which is going to be the square root of 25 plus 100, which is the square root of 125. And then I'm thinking about reducing it. That's going to be 25 times 5, which you can square root the 25. You can't square the remaining 5 inside. And so the total work here is going to be 5 root 5 times 8 times the cosine of 20. All right. And that comes out to be approximately 84 foot pounds. All right, now um, just be careful because there are going to be some examples where they will have a force, let's say a force of magnitude 30 along, and then they'll give you some equation like y equals 1 third x. Okay, so the thing about one th y equals 1 third x is they're telling you a direction. Every 3 over, you would go 1 up. So that is the direction vector. When I think of y equals 1 third x, you're, th you're, uh, you're thinking 3, 1. The slope of that is 1 third. Now the issue is, kind of like the first example we had, the magnitude of this is the square root of 3 squared plus 1 squared, which is the square root of 10. And what we really need is a magnitude of 30. So if I was to use this, I would need to adjust this force vector. And I would do 3 comma 1. First of all, I would divide by root 10. And what this is getting is the unit vector in the right direction. And then I would have to multiply by 30. And that would make sure that that, that unit vector I have is going um, 30 out. It's making sure that the force vector is the right size. And so the force vector we would end up with here is 30 times this, which would be 90 all over root 10, 30 all over root 10. Okay, which is ugly, but it's not bad. If you just think about making the force vector, the vector, get first of all, get a vector on the right angle shrink it down to one, then times it out to exactly what you need.